Hello. So now we're gonna talk about how to make our own Charles McGee inspired artwork. For this project, you're going to need two pieces of paper, crayons of different colors, whatever colors you have, glue or glue stick, and a pair of scissors. And remember to be safe with your scissors. Always carry them with the blades closed together, your hand around the blades so that they can't open. So you can see the color bursting out the top like a bouquet of flowers. And then for some of my friends that need a reminder, your thumb goes in the little hole, your fingers go in the big hole, and your scissors arm always stays pinned to your side. The paper hand is the one that's gonna be doing the moving, but you don't have to remember that quite yet. We'll get there again. So let's begin by looking at our project. So this is the drawing that we're going to be working on today. You can see like in Charles McGee's painting, Spectral Rhythms, we have the usage of value where the color changes and then fades into another color. We have the use of a horizon and we have the uses of organic shapes. So to start this project, you're gonna to need to take out two pieces of paper. Both of them you're going to fold in half. One of them you're gonna fold a second time in half, so into quarters. So first thing, holding it the long ways, so vertical up and down. Oopsies, just fold it in half. So have your two edges meet. And holding those two edges tightly down together, drag your hand across to create a crease. Now leave that piece of paper folded and set it aside. For your second piece of paper, you're gonna do the same thing. Vertical, fold your top edges up or your bottom edges up so that the two shortest sides are meeting each other. And then you're going to, again, have the two shortest sides meet each other to fold it into quarters. Now to begin this, you can either unfold it and tear these sections apart, or you can keep them folded so you have something more sturdy to work with. Just like with any art project, you're going to want to begin with something underneath your surface. So a scrap piece of paper, cardboard bag, anything. You want to keep your table safe. So I'm going to pick out, let's see, I like purple a lot. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to try having it fade from this purple to this blue. So to do my value, which means start darker to lighter, my value scale, I'm going to choose, again, a short edge. See how this edge is shorter than this long edge? And I'm going to start in one side and color heaviest on that side. Now, when you're going back and forth, because you're using short edges, sometimes you'll see that it's going to pull up. If you can hold your whole hand down on the paper, it'll help keep it in space, in place. So this edge is going to be the most purple. I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on this edge. And now I'm going to move up my paper. And as I move up my paper, I'm going to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. So if there's any edges where you missed, you can go back, holding it down, and go towards the edge. So I'm Pressing, lifting off. It's okay if pieces break off, accidents happen. Press, lift off, press, lift off. Do the same thing on this side. Press, lift off, or drag off if you have a piece of paper here to collect it. I'm just gonna work your way up. until your whole page is slightly covered and one end is gonna be white and the other end is gonna be the deepest, darkest version of that crayon color that you have. You can keep on going back and forth over things to get that desired color. That's how I start with the first color. My second color, I'm gonna do the same thing, but from the opposite end. 
the color really dark on this side. Most saturated. Saturated means heavy with color. Oops, again, accidents happen and that's okay. Maybe it'd be easier for you if you have some broken crayons to peel some of that paper off. And now you can color, so I'm holding it sideways, no longer like a pencil, but I'm holding it sideways so I can rub it. I can color sideways and more, a little bit more easily up and down the sides of my paper too. So sometimes accents lead to happy coincidences or conveniences. Even I'm getting a little crinkles there. I'm going to have my blue fade into my purple now. Now I think I'm going to go over this to my purple again because I don't like how much white I see peeking through. Another trick is if you have a white crayon, you can use this white crayon and go over in the opposite direction. Oh my goodness, I keep on breaking crayons. Miss Miller is pressing too hard with her crayons. That's okay, I can still use a broken crayon. You see how I color, I'm holding it down and I'm coloring in between my two fingers so that the paper doesn't tear. You can see the colors kind of being blended together a little bit better. White is always really good for blending other colors together. It might make them a little bit lighter, but it'll fill in some of those empty spaces. There's my first gradient. All right, so now that we have our first of our four sides colored in with our value scale gradient, we can pick out another two colors to do the other sides. So I chose this sort of indigo green, and I think I'm gonna do more of a forest green. Turn your paper over, keep it folded, because that'll give you a nice clean line. And then you just repeat the process. So starting at this edge, I'm gonna press the hardest with the color. Remember to follow the direction of the paper. So, I'm going up and down, back and forth. I'm not scribbling all over the place. I'm going straight up and down, back and forth. And then when I get to the edges, if I don't want to tear my edges or crease them, I'll press down and drag off. That's part of why it's so important to prep for your art projects so that you don't destroy whatever table you're working on and so you don't have to worry about how you're working on your artwork. So I got the most saturated color here. And then I'm going to color it down more gently. Remember, you can always go back over areas to get more color and pigment in there. It doesn't have to go exactly to the edges if you don't want to you're going to end up cutting a shape out of here. So the odds of your edges being there are pretty slim. But if you want to see it, you're welcome to do it. Once you get a hang for it, you might end up coloring faster like me too. But it's okay if you don't color this fast yet. So now I have a value scale created of this indigo where it starts from the darkest to gets lighter. Now I'm going to switch over to my forest green color. And again, start on the opposite side, pressing the hardest. So I'm not curling my edges. I'm dragging my crayon off the page. You can actually do a whole art project just with the marks that you create dragging off your page, but we'll talk about that in another segment. So 
So I got a nice heavy level of pigment down. The color is really saturated. And now I'm going to start blending. Blend it into the edges of the other color. Then I'm going to go back over again. I want more of a transition right here, so I'm going to put more green down. And now I'm going to go back over with this other blue to try to blend in some more. We're going to focus the blue on the bluer side so that you can see more of a transition in color. If you get too much down, you can take your nail and scratch a little bit, and that will lift some of the pigment and make it lighter again. You won't be able to erase entirely, but acts almost a little bit like an eraser. Oh no, see? I got a little more green over here than I wanted. Let's go scratch it off. Let's glue back this way. <laughs> Accidents happen, we just don't want to tear a favor. I think I have a little bit of a color change gradient happening here. And I think I'm going to do another color. I think I want to use this blue again, and I want to keep the theme I have with purple. So I'm going to reuse green and purple this time, or excuse me, that indigo and purple to get to the other side. I'm just going to open it up, fold it the other way along the same crease I just did. Make it real tight. So start and end to indigo again. <laughs> end indigo. <laughs> puns for you. Free puns. See, you can't go back and forth. I'm not following my own directions. If you're holding it really tight, you can go back and forth in the space that you're holding it in between your fingers. But if you're not holding it there, it's just gonna pop right up, so. Darkest at the edge, so I'm going to go back and forth the most right there. Lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes up. And repeat with purple. I'm getting lighter again, pressing less firmly, being more gentle as I get into the greenish blue areas, the indigo, teal. There's a lot of debate about indigo and teal, and we could talk about that in our color lesson. And, oops, too dark, too much purple. Lift some of that purple out of there with my nail. Blend in some blue. I don't like it exactly, but that's okay. I was I started too hard in the center, so I got some of these stripy lines. So you need to start hard at your edges and then get more gentle as you reach the top. But because of how the purple was blended, they're blending together pretty nicely, and so I'm able to make up for my mistake. Let's blend some of this purple on here again. 
if you start to have your paper rub your paper, if you start to have the paper of your crayon rub the paper that you're drawing at, it will lift some of the color off too. So you're just going to peel that off, put it in the garbage or put it aside in your craft cup. And we're blending again. So there's my purple and teal. Now, I think I want to do something that has high contrast color from these. So I think I'm going to do green that I used before to this orange. So that's going to be trickier. I'm going to get out my yellow just in case, because if we were looking at the rainbow, green, well, those yellow, <laughs> those orange, yellow, green, and the rainbow, but also both orange and green have yellow in them. So yellow would be a good way to blend those two colors together. So I'm going to start with my orange. Because of all the stuff on my paper, I might be getting some debris or other marks from before. It's okay. You can either Get a new scratch paper if you want something clean to work on, or just deal with a little bit of mess. So I'm gonna start again, hardest on the side, coloring the most with this orange, the color is the most saturated on the edges. Broke my crayon, that's okay. I'm gonna use the edge of it to fade into the rest of the paper. You might even find it easier to color in with the side of your crayon. They're your art supplies. Treat them how you want them. But when they're shared, we always have to make sure we're as gentle as possible. Orange. And now I'm going to use my green. So starting heaviest on the opposite side. Color it really nice and heavy. Woo! And me in the middle. And now I think I'm going to use some of this yellow that I was talking about before to blend them together. For blending now, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. You won't see the mark as much, so it's not as important, but you'll see that the colors will go together more if you go in the opposite direction you were coloring in. So we've been coloring up and down. We're going to blend side to side. Again, I'm holding it firm with my fingers and coloring between my fingers so that the paper doesn't crease or crinkle while I'm doing this. It's part of why I'm able to go so fast. Now you see I have another gradient here. I think I want to put a little more green in to help transition between colors a little bit better. Uh, a little more word on this side. I'm still going the same directions with the orange like I was before. There we go. So now I have four gradients. And the next thing is our one big.
big giant gradient. So that piece of paper that we folded in half before, here's a quick reminder. You have your vertical paper, you're gonna take your short edge to your short edge, and we're just gonna fold it in half. So I have my two edges meet, and I hold it down with my fingertips, and then with the other hand, slide it down, make my crease. Get your scrap paper out again. And this time you're gonna do a completely different gradient, but only on the half sheet. You wanna keep this crease here so you can see it. I am going to put down a new piece of scrap paper so that my marks don't transfer. And let's see. So I've used a lot of purples and blues here. I wonder. I want something high contrast or something that's going to stand out a little bit more. Maybe I could do red. And this other shade of red. So we have violet red and red violet. Same thing. So this time we're going to be coloring on the long edges. So short edges, long edges. This time you're going to be putting the most color in your long edges. The hands spread out. You can always work on it in sections. If you to get those edges, this one it is important to get the edges. So press down and drag off your page onto your scrap paper. Woo, squeaky. Hardest at this edge, press the most firm, cleared it in really well so I can't see any white. And now I'm going to get more gentle as I go up the page. Tiny lines. I can turn it over so it still works in the direction my hand naturally draws. And ropes and just keep on working with it the way it is. Use it sideways now. <clears throat> and let's see. Well, I said I was going to use this red. Do I want this red in this? I don't know, do I want orange and this color to blend into each other? Hmm. Pink. Maybe I can use some of this pink. So I'm going to do again. Well, it's saturated on the opposite side. So this side was that red violet. Now this side I'm going to do in this pink instead. I said I was going to do red, but I changed my mind. It's okay. You can change your mind. It's your artwork. Press left off the page.
All right. Pretty close to having it pretty colored in here. I'll turn the brightness a little bit because I think the shine is making it look brighter than it is. So this is my first side of my gradient. All right, so now that we have our pink to purpley red gradient, you can see how perfectly clean that line is. We're going to do the gradient on the other side. For something more dramatic, I would suggest using black and then whatever favorite color that you want to use. Um, got these purpley pinks. Hmm. How about black and green? Black and light green. So you pick either long side to start at again and press the hardest with that color on that side. So my green is gonna be down at the fold. Doesn't matter what you decide, it's gonna give you a different effect regardless. most green here and I'm going to get it lighter as it goes towards the other edge again. <laughs> ah. I'm getting a good fade. Now I'm going to bring in that black. I think it's going to be easier for me if I use the side of the crayon. So I'm just going to break off a tiny little piece off the tip. So right now I'm just peeling off some of my paper. I'm going to break it off where the paper ends. And now holding it sideways, instead of trying to hold it like I'm writing with it, I'm going to hold it sideways like that so I can cover a lot more of the paper with it. And now remember, the edge is always going to be the darkest. So you're just going to go over and over and over and over and over and over again here. Push towards your edges so you don't tear them. It's hard to remember sometimes when you're actively coloring, but blend, blend. Green, other side. You'll see that green when you overlap the gray is going to, like black is going to make kind of a grayish color. It's a new shade. Whenever you add black to a color, it creates a new shade. Even I keep on forgetting and getting my edges.
back. If you want to keep going, you can try to keep on putting color in so you don't see any more white anywhere. I'm going to stop there for now to show you the next steps. So now that you open it, a very dramatic gradient again. If you see any spots that you want to touch up, you can go back over them. But the next trick is to cut your shapes out of here. So you can go about it in a couple ways. If you don't have scissors at home, you can try tearing them or you can just cut them right out. I like to separate my paper. If you folded it several times, like we did, it's going to tear along the creases pretty easily. You don't have to do that. You can just use it and cut it right out. What you're gonna do now is figure out what kind of shapes you want. So on the back of your grid, or excuse me, gradient, draw an organic shape. An organic shape is anything that isn't geometric, any shape that isn't geometric. So squares, rectangles, circles, octagon, trapezoids, those are all geometric shapes. Organic shapes are things like you would see created by nature. So I'm gonna do kind of like this slight kidney bean shape. And this one, maybe I'm going to do a squished figure eight kind of. And that one, let's see. I'll do something more ripply over here. And then how about an eye type shape? Now you're just going to cut those out. So if you find it easier to cut out, you can tear them. If you find tearing hard or scary, you don't have to do that. Remember with your scissors, thumb goes in the little hole, fingers go in the big hole. Your scissors hand stays anchored on the table and your paper hand is the one that moves around. So I'm going to just follow the line that I created. The paper hand's the one during the rotation. This is our hand is just opening and closing. Here's my first shape. And now I have this grid over here with a negative shape in it. Another shape. Here, I'm going to show you on this one with ones that weren't torn apart, just so you know you can do it this way if you want to. Just a little bit harder to maneuver the paper around. That squiggly shape was the hardest by far. I had lots of bumps in it. And now my eye shape. Whoopsies. Right. 
eye shape. I felt a lot choppier on the edges, so I'm just going to go back in with my scissors and clean that up a little bit. So you don't have to have the same shapes as me. You're going to have different shapes than me. But let's see how we're going to arrange them now. So now, eventually, you're going to need your glue. Or glue stick. But first, let's think of a way that we want to arrange them on the sheet. Let's see. Mm, I'm going to start. Do I want some of them all over the horizon? Do I want some of them floating down? Hmm. Maybe I want it this way. You have a crease in your felt paper that won't go down. Just hold it the other direction. And it'll make it like nice and flat again for you. I'm thinking that I might want the black up top. So I'm gonna see. Do I want these squiggles? I mean, like them like this. Do I want to put this down here? Maybe I want to trade. Hmm. So you can just arrange and play with your pieces until you get the look that you like the most. Maybe I want them to touch the horizon a little bit. Do I want them floating? You decide. I like that. This green one's giving me the hardest time. I'm trying to decide. Do I want it over here? It felt more harmonious, harmonious the other way. So let's stick to what I had. And now all you're gonna do is take out your glue. You should have it closed. You see a little white sticking at the top. Just twist it open. Oh, I don't hear air coming out. Maybe mine dried out. That's okay. If you don't have your glue, you can also use your glue stick. If your glue stick is Pop it open, make sure you have just a little bit showing. If you're trying to clear your glue container, sometimes you can just pop off the little glue at the top to see if that helped. Oh, nope, still not getting glue out of there. One more time. Oh, there she goes, okay. So now that I've got a couple, a little bit of glue, I'm just gonna put a couple spots on the back of my pieces. And since I've already arranged them, I can just set them exactly where I know I want them to go. It only takes a couple drops of glue, tiny little beads. If you put too much on, it's gonna cause your paper to get all soggy because it's gonna absorb the water in the glue. a little bit closer and then the sideways one it looks almost like a pool all right there i have it there's my done piece if i want to i can go back in and try to cut out new shapes and add them but i'm just going to leave this one as is compare it to the other one I did. Different. Maybe you can decide based on the way these two look 
how you would change your own. I think I liked this one a little bit better with the black being on the bottom and having the dark shapes more up top. But I kind of like the colors I chose in this one a little bit more. You make your own artistic choices and make sure that you take a picture of your art so I can see it and share it here with me. Thanks, artists. Talk to you later.